studio mic. All right, so we are sitting here with Syed, and he's going to run through some Visual Studio for Mac. And uh, ready to get started? Yeah. Let's All do right. It, Shane. So we're going to hit HDMI, and we're going to share your screen. All right, let's do that. All right. All right. So, uh, welcome to uh, getting started with .NET Core three and Visual Studio for Mac. I'm Syed Hashimi, a program manager on the Visual Studio for Mac team. Uh, before we get into the uh, demos, I'll just take a minute to uh, run through the different types of apps that you can create with Visual Studio for Mac. Uh, so there's primarily three different types of apps that you can create with Visual Studio for Mac. <clears throat> you can create the, uh, the mobile apps. Uh, you can create the, the mobile apps with Xamarin. Uh, you can either use uh, Xamarin Forms to share both logic and UI, or you could, um, or you could uh, develop with uh, sharing your logic and then implementing native UIs with Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android. Uh, you can also develop web and cloud applications using .NET Core and uh, ASP.NET Core, and that's going to be the meat of this talk, so we'll get into a lot of those details soon. Uh, you can also develop uh, games and real-time 3D apps using Unity. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the let's go ahead and get started with the .NET Core three related features. Okay, let me get out of this one. <coughs> All right, before I uh, show some demos with existing projects, let me show you how to create a new .NET Core three project. Uh, so we go to File, New Solution here, and then .NET Core. Oh. All right, here we go. So .NET Core. So here we've got a, <clears throat> a variety of different types of apps that you can create, a console app or various different web apps. Uh, we've recently added some templates here. So you can see we've got Worker uh, and some uh, spa type templates here. All right, let me go ahead and cancel that. I'll open up a existing uh, solution that I have here. All right, so this solution is a .NET Core global command that I've been working on for a little while. And uh, <clears throat> what I wanted to first kind of cover was uh, support for C Sharp 8 and .NET Core 3. So with the Visual Studio for Mac 8.3 release, we have full support for C Sharp 8 and um, .NET Core 3. And uh, in, addition to, in addition to enabling enabling you to author your code with C Sharp 8, uh, the IDE also tries to find areas in your code that you can simplify or kind of clean up uh, by using the new uh, C Sharp 8 syntax. <clears throat> From lines uh, 18 to 21, you can see I've got some using statements here, and there's a little green underline. So let me go and see what the, uh, what the suggestion is here. So we've got a quick fix. All right, we can see one of the suggestions is to convert the using statement to a simple using statement. So let me try that. All right, we can see it simplified it a little bit. Uh, from here, I'll do the keyboard shortcut, which is option enter. And uh, also the same for this one. All right, so there we go. We can see that uh, it's taken my uh, C Sharp 7 code, kind of cleaned it up a little bit using the new C Sharp 8 syntax. Uh, it's a lot, a lot easier to read and a lot easier to uh, kind of digest there. So that's, that's really helpful and really kind of very cool. Uh, let me show you another kind of quick fix that we have. Uh, it's not specific to C Sharp 8, but uh, it's one of my favorites. So I'll go ahead and show that one to you as well. Uh, so here we can see I've got a call to string format, so I'll do a quick fix for this one. Uh, we can see that it's giving me the option to convert to interpolated string. Let me try that out. All right, so it's it's converted my uh, string format to uh, interpolated string here. Uh, so yeah, so this is another area where it's you know a lot easier to read and uh, a lot cleaner code there. All right, so that's what we've got. Uh, before we uh, before we go on to the next demo, let me just. Um, let me just build this application, make sure that it still works. So I'll do build all, make sure we haven't introduced any uh, errors into this project. All right, we can see it's building now. Give it another second to finish up. All right, perfect, okay, great. All right, so now let's move on to uh, let's move on to talk about the, the new web editors that we have. So in 8.2, uh, we replaced the C Sharp editor with the same C Sharp editor that we have in Visual Studio running on Windows. And in 8.3, we, we replaced the web editors. So those are CSHTML, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, JSON. Uh, th those, are all, those are all basically brand new in Visual Studio for Mac in 8.3, and they're all uh, 
essentially the same editors that we have in uh, Visual Studio on Windows. All right, so here the um, the application that I've opened up is a uh, it's the it's actually the ASP.NET Core Beginners Workshop, uh, and then there's instructions for Visual Studio for Mac, Visual Studio, and uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, and it's all on GitHub, and uh, the link will be at the end of the the slide here. All right, so let me uh, let me kind of quickly go ahead and run this application, make sure that it's uh, it's working fine. So I'll do start without debugging. All right, and um, we're we're probably going to do start without debugging a few more times during the session here. So I'll take a note of the keyboard shortcut. So it's Option Command Return. So we'll be using that keyboard shortcut uh, for the following times that we uh, start without debugging. All right, so here we go. So let me navigate to the uh, to the movies page. Okay, so uh, we've got. Well, there's supposed to be some content here, but I think I might have opened up the the wrong version of this app. But that's okay because we're not going to be <clears throat> we're not going to be interacting with this application, anyways. All right, so let me show you some of the enhancements that we have in the Razor editor here. All right, you can see we we get the uh, the same type of IntelliSense that we get in Visual Studio uh, running on Windows. Uh, another enhancement that we get by switching over is the ability to have um, IntelliSense and completions for uh, languages that are embedded. Uh, so for example, here I have a Razor page and I'm going to embed some JavaScript here. Uh-huh. All right, so we can see we get the, we get the uh, same type of IntelliSense that we get when editing on Visual Studio for Windows. Uh, if you've used the uh, Visual Studio on Windows, this should feel uh, like a very uh, familiar experience there. All right, so let me go ahead and stop that. I'm going to open a, a different application that I've been developing or that I've developed uh, in the past. Go ahead and save that. <clears throat> And uh, this app is, uh, is uh, kind of more of like a basic app. Um, we've got some JavaScript here. So uh, what I want to do is show you now the, uh, the typing experience with JavaScript. So uh, what I'll essentially do is basically retype in lines 1 through 12 so you can see what that experience looks like. All right, so we can see we get some, uh, some great IntelliSense here with nice uh, descriptions. And uh, you can look through the, the different overloads as well. All right, so here we go. Oops. Okay. All right, so uh, yeah, so very kind of similar Intel sense to what we've seen before in Visual Studio and Windows. Uh huh. Yeah. So uh, should be uh, very familiar if you've used uh, VS on Windows there. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, stop it at that. We'll move on to uh, to another demo here. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna skip the uh, the CSS editor because uh, we got a bunch more uh, demos here, but I might get back to it later on if we have time. All right, so let me go. Let me close out of this and go into a new application here. Also close out of that. All right, so let me do, I'm going to keep this one open. Uh, I'm going to right click and say new instance. Uh, this is a relatively new feature as well. <clears throat> so uh, the application I'm going to be opening up here is, uh, is actually an Azure Functions application. Uh, while that's opening, let me, let me show you how you can create a new uh, Azure Functions project on your own. So I'll go to uh, new here. Under, uh, under Cloud General, we can pick Azure Functions. Uh, and then here is the list of uh, Azure Functions templates. Uh, you can also see we've got a ability to update these templates uh, before we create the project. Uh, so it's always recommended to go through and do that. All right, so let me go ahead and cancel out of that. And I'll go back to, I'll go back to uh, the, Let me open here. One second.
All right. <clears throat> so uh, this this is a um, th th this is an example of a uh, durable Azure function, and this actually was created by Brady Gaster. Uh, he let me borrow this code here. So let me go ahead and uh, start running this. Uh, I'll start without debugging, and it was uh, option command return. Uh, this application actually uh, it consists of a, a web app and uh, uh, a few Azure functions, and then uh, they have the web app has real time updates coming through via uh, Signal R here. So we'll see how this works. We can see the uh, the terminal has been opened up here. Let me go back to that. Uh, so this is the Azure function that's starting up uh, from the project that's been loaded up here in Visual Studio for Mac. So we're going to let that, uh, we'll give it a second to kind of warm up and get ready. Uh, and then here is the, the web application itself. And the idea is when you send a loan, uh, these different tiles will start lighting up uh, to indicate that something's happening. So let me go to my terminal. Okay, so here we've got the Azure function. Uh, so I'm, I'm about to send a, a loan request here. Uh, so we, what we want to do is keep our eyes on the Azure function as well as the, the website here. I'm going to use the .NET HTTP REPL uh, command here to open a connection to that API. <clears throat> Let me type in the command. So I'm going to do a post. All right, so the customer name is uh, Brady, and we're going to uh, request a loan of $100,000. All right, so yeah, I'm going to hit Enter, keep an eye on the function to see that that one's lighting up, and also the, the web app itself. Oh. Uh, one second. Oh, oh, I think I have a, I think I've mistyped something here, actually. Uh, one second, let me, uh, let me go and, I think I typed something wrong here. Let me go and grab my, <clears throat> let me go and grab this line so I can just copy it. Okay, all right, so I've got some kind of uh, <clears throat> some kind of error going on here. Um, I'm not sure what I've done to this. I think maybe I've done something to this. Let me turn this off, terminate everything. Let me try it one more time. Let me make sure this one's off too. Okay, let's try it one more time and then uh, if that doesn't work, we'll go back into uh, the next demo here then. All right, so it looks like we're good. I'm not sure what's happening. Okay, let me try it one more time. Let me close that connection. Okay, all right, that's fine. Uh, I must have introduced some sort of error here. This was this was definitely working. Uh, yep, <clears throat> last night. But anyways. Uh, when I submit that loan application, we would have seen these tiles start lighting up. Like there would have been a, um, th this would have activated, and then if the loan was approved, uh, we would see some green check marks here. Uh, I think I just uh, made some sort of a some kind of mistake there on that one. So I apologize for that one. All right, let me go ahead and close out of this, and then we'll go back to the to the next demo. Close out of this instance of Visual Studio for Mac. All right, so now I'm going to open up the, uh, th this is a, another kind of sample application that we have. Uh, there, there's actually like almost, uh, it's, it's like essentially like a book that's been written on this one. Uh, <clears throat> and you can, follow, you can follow along either in Visual Studio or Visual Studio for Mac. Uh, it's called eShop on Web. And uh, we'll have a link to this in the last slide as well that we'll get to. Uh, in this case, you can see this is not, uh, it hasn't been updated to .NET Core 3 yet. We can still, we can see that it's still using uh, .NET Core 2.2 uh, in the Docker file. Uh, so this application is also uh, leveraging Docker here as well. So we can see we've got the, the Docker file inside the web project, and uh, we've got the Docker Compose uh, web project here as well. Let me go ahead and start without debugging. 
uh, while that starts, uh, let me point out that uh, we also have a, uh, there's a, a full suite of uh, unit tests that come with this application. Uh, so three different unit test projects. I'm gonna go ahead and open up that pad and we'll get that one ready. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna be running those unit tests here pretty soon. So the, uh, the eShop on web sample application is essentially like a shopping cart type of app. Uh, you can go into the app and you know uh, you can you can add certain things to your basket. Let's say I'll, I like this uh, .NET bot sweatshirt, so I'll add that to my uh, shopping cart, and then maybe uh, I'll add this uh, cup of tea to my shopping cart, uh, and then I can check out. Uh, we've got the login functionality here as well, uh, and then it just uh, pretends like it makes an order. You know, so th this is not a uh, this is just a sample app, so uh, we don't actually submit the order anyway, anywhere here. All right, so that was that one. All right, so now let me show you how we can uh, how we can run these unit tests here. So here we can uh, we can do run all to run all the unit tests at the same time. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, but in addition to that, if you wanted to run any any set of unit tests, uh, all you all you have to do is right click on the node. And then say run tests. Yes. All you have to do is click on the node and say run test, and then that will run the test that's under that particular node. Uh, so if I only wanted to run the unit test, I could always right click on the unit test node and say run tests. Uh, or if I wanted to run everything, I can right click on eShop on web and then run test there. We can see here now it's gone through the unit tests and also gone through the integration tests and uh, finally went through the functional tests and everything has passed. Uh, so that's really great. Uh, let me show you a, another feature that we've recently added here. Uh, so a, a couple of these, a couple of these unit test projects use the mock uh, NuGet package. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to update that NuGet package for all the projects that use it in my solution. So I'll go to, uh, I right clicked on the solution and I'll say manage NuGet packages. Uh, I'll go to updates. I'll find the particular uh, NuGet package that I'd like to update and select that and then say update package. At this point it presents me with a dialog that shows the projects that are consuming that package and gives me the opportunity to check or uncheck uh, the projects that I want to install that into. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to click cancel here because I don't want to actually do that at this time. And uh, if you're bold, uh, we also have update NuGet packages on the solution uh, node and and this one would uh, would update all the NuGet packages. Uh, I think maybe that that's that's not really a feature for me, but uh, but it might be a feature for you. All right, so now let's take a look at um, let's take a look at some other stuff that we got here. Okay, so now uh, let me go back to let me go back to um, let me open a let me open a different uh, solution that I have here. So this is a uh, th this is a, a web app that I've been working on for a while. I recently converted it over to .NET Core 3. Uh, let me go ahead and start running this one. So Option Command Enter. So this application is a ASP.NET Core web app uh, that will that will display the different uh, templates that are available for .NET New. And oh yeah, right. Okay, great. So this actually. So now now what's happened here is I tried to run my application. And uh, when the web app came up, it says, hey, I couldn't make a connection uh, to this API. And the reason for that is when I launched this app, I just launched the, the web app itself. Uh, but there's also an API application here that needs to be launched at the same time. The way that I'm going to do that is I'll right click on the, .NET new, on the solution node. I'll say set startup projects. Uh, now we need to create uh, what's called a solution run configuration. Uh, I'll just go with the defaults here. And then we pick the, the projects that we want to start with this particular run configuration. So I'll pick the API and the web project and click OK. All right. We can see that, uh, and you may have noticed that it switched from templates web, which was uh, the web project, to multiple projects. We go ahead and start without debugging. So Option, Command, Enter. All right, so now we can see that uh, it first launched the API project, uh, and then it launched the, the web project. 
so that that was an example of that was an example of how you can uh, launch more than one project uh, on start for either uh, start without debugging or start with debugging. Uh, however, you you start it. All right, so let's uh, let's take another kind of look at this web project that we have here. So I've got a let me open up the the ww root folder here and expand some nodes. Uh, so you may have noticed we've got uh, file nesting here. Uh, this was also uh, recently added. So the uh, the file nesting that you see here in Visual Studio for Mac should be the same exact uh, file nesting experience that you have in uh, Visual Studio when working on Windows. So that's really great. And uh, let me show you another feature that we've recently added as well. <clears throat> so here we have uh, the launch settings.json file. So this file, uh, this file will describe how the application should be, uh, how the environment should be set up for when the application is is launched, uh, either debugging or without debugging. And uh, this file is used uh, not only in Visual Studio on Windows, but also uh, you can use this file from the .NET CLI when doing .NET Run. And, uh, and now you can leverage this file in Visual Studio for Mac as well. All right, so in this file, there's primarily a couple of things that you'd probably be interested in fine tuning or, or customizing. Uh, those would be the environment variables that are there. And uh, a specific environment variable to definitely keep an eye out would be ASP.NET Core under, underscore environment. So we have that set to development. Uh, and also the application URLs. Uh, if you like, you can definitely feel free to uh, to edit this file directly uh, with any additional environment variables or uh, tweaking uh, any settings here. Uh, but you can also interact with that through our uh, project options. So you can right click on the project, go to options, and then I'm going to go into run configurations uh, default. Let's move this over here a little bit. All right, so we'll say. Uh, demo name, uh, .NET conf, and uh, let me go through and, uh, and change the, uh, the URL as well. All right. All right, so we're going to keep an eye out on this launch settings.json file when I click OK here. All right, so we can see that, uh, that, it, that it has added the, uh, the demo name uh, environment variable that I've got there, uh, and it also has uh, edited my application URL. So let me go back and I will undo that uh, before I forget and break things. Let me go through and remove that. Set these back to what they were. All right, so we've got that. All right, cool. So now uh, let me show you a. Um, let me show you. Uh, let me show you the the Navigate to uh, window here. So in the top right hand corner, we've got Navigate to. We can use that for a variety of different uh, tasks. And the way that you can get into that is uh, Command dot. Uh, so if I do Command dot, I can do various different things here. Like I can I can run commands. I can search through my solution. Uh, if you want to run a command, you'll prefix it with C. You'll say start. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, I accidentally hit Command Q on that one. My bad. So yeah, so you, you can run various different uh, commands there, like start without debugging. Let me go back. Uh, we'll just do Razor Pages movie here. Let that one load up. All right, so we're all loaded up. Uh, so I'll do Command Dot one more time. Say C colon start. Okay, all right. So I must have run into something there. I didn't. Uh, I didn't actually try that ahead of time. So I run into some sort of a problem. But uh, this is not act the build that I have here is actually a few days old. It's not actually the real uh, RTM bits there. So I'm just going to say this is probably just like the the Frankenstein build that I got going on here. Um, all right, cool. So I think that was uh, that was mostly what I had. Uh, I think we have a few minutes left for questions. No. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to switch over to host. Right. Is that right? Yeah, perfect. Look, I know, how, know what I'm doing. Yeah, right. All right. So we had a couple <laughs> of questions. Um, all good stuff. I think we're making a lot of headway in uh, the VS for Mac stuff there. Um, Jay Haldago7 asked, uh, database projects uh, support in, in VS for Mac. We had that in 
competitive in Windows. Obviously, we've got 20 years right, of development right, on VS right, for Windows. Right. Um, <clears throat> any any ideas if we're going to do that? In, yeah, in Mac? you know that 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 <clears throat> that's a really great question. So you know, just kind of like what you mentioned. You know, we've got like 20 or maybe even 30 years of development with Visual Studio on Windows, right? And uh, Visual Studio for Mac obviously has a a lot of ways to to kind of go to kind of compete and to try to try to get after that breadth of support. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that I would look at it right the way that I the way that I look at it right now is you know we have three primary areas which I mentioned uh, which I mentioned were uh, mobile, web and cloud and then uh, and gaming. then uh, game yeah games in 3D right? right so what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure we have a really great experience around those three and uh, bring ourselves up to par with those scenarios. Right. With Visual Studio on Windows, and then and then we can just kind of keep up to date as they ship additional features. Sure. Uh, after we get that, after we get to that point, then we're going to start looking at kind of expanding a little bit in the breadth, right? So okay. we'll look at things like database projects, C plus plus support, and then uh, various other different, you know, like Super let's say Azure fixes. projects, and yeah, and it's all it's all kind of driven by uh, by customer feedback, you know. Like obviously here in DevDiv, we're very kind of customer oriented, and so. Once, once we basically get through our fundamentals and fix the stuff that we have now, we're going to take a closer look at customer feedback for what areas should we then start investing in going forward. Right. And then, so basically, you know, we fix what we have now and then slowly start to expand out the breadth. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a really great question. So as, uh, as you were doing the presentation, uh, the same topic kept coming up uh, over and over and over, and that's Blazor support. Oh yeah, Blazor support. Yeah, right. So uh, that, that's something that we're actually working on right now. Uh, and for Blazor, for Blazor server side applications, you can you can you can edit and debug and, and run Blazor applications. Uh, the 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 limitations today are you know we don't have editor support, and with with 8.3, the team was was strictly focused on existing editors that we had in Visual Studio for Mac and mm -hmm. replacing those with Windows and making sure we don't have any regressions in those scenarios. And they were very busy doing that. That was a lot of work. Uh, so now that now that 8.3 is behind us, uh, they're they're also going to start tackling the uh, the dot razor files. Those are the yeah. files that we use in, in Blazor applications. Uh, so the goal is to the goal is to have that in 8.4. Uh, but obviously, you know, there there's no promises on any particular timelines. But that's that's what we're working towards, and uh, it's definitely something that we're all kind of very excited about getting into. Just haven't had a chance yet to to actually finalize that. Right. But, uh, Last thing that we always we always see in all of our demos. Right. VS Live. Oh yeah, right. So <clears throat> live, sh live share. Live share. Live yeah, share that's right. So so that that kind of goes back to my previous point of you know we we want to really we want to really try to make sure that we have a really great experience for what we call the inner loop. Mm -hmm. That's where you know you're working as a developer and you're developing your application and. Uh, <clears throat> we want to make sure we've, we've got our we've got that set up straight. So we're not quite there yet, I think. But once once we kind of get everything kind of in shape, then we're going to start kind of thinking about things like uh, sure. live, live share and, and those sorts of things. Yeah, cool. that's right. Yep. All right. Well, um, thanks for coming on, showing the VS for yeah, right. stuff. I know yeah. I'm I'm using it more and more every day and kind of seeing what the what the rough edges are and where we can yeah, improve right. the product and see yep. what's there. So uh, thanks. For Okay, could we show my, my last uh, slide yeah, one time real quick? Yeah, the last slide and we'll get that this is the HDMI. Okay, and yeah, there's yeah. our resources for uh, uh, getting a hold of the, the, the demos and the slides and the resources. Yeah, and definitely uh, follow us on Twitter as well. We have a relatively new uh, Visual Studio for Mac uh, Twitter handle there. Cool. So yeah, thanks for having me on the show today. Awesome. So we're going to transition and it looks like we've got uh, Cam coming up. Is that it? So Cam's going to talk about running his house on .NET and doing smart home automation. Awesome.